Hello, this is Daryl Castle with today's Castle Report. This is Friday, the 10th day of December, and this, the year 2021. This report will discuss how fear of the pandemic is being used by various people around this world to dismantle democracy, obliterate constitutional rights, and usher in totalitarian governments and leaders. Before I begin, I make note that last Tuesday, the 7th of December, was the 80th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor that launched the United States into World War II. That date is an appropriate start from which to begin a discussion of fear and what is currently doing to the once free people of the world. The United States had a population of about 160 million at the start of the war and during the four years of conflict, about 16 million people served in uniform or about 10% of the population. They served because their nation had been attacked, obviously but also because evil had to be eliminated from the world. Their victory gave the world, even their defeated foes, a chance at democracy or the right of people to govern themselves. Today, we find ourselves in another battle, the greatest battle of our lifetimes, possibly of all time, according to Robert F. Kennedy Jr. in his book, The Real Anthony Fauci, which I again urge you to read. Mr. Kennedy describes how a coalition of forces, intelligence agencies, pharmaceutical companies, social media titans, medical bureaucracies, mainstream media, and the military are using fear induced by a health crisis to impose totalitarian control worldwide. Anthony Fauci is the face of this coalition, its most prominent face, because he has been medical advisor to six different presidents, Mr. Kennedy argues that the concept of regulatory capture has turned U.S. public health agencies into veritable pharmaceutical companies. For example, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, receives 45% of its annual budget from Big Pharma. Big Pharma receives much of its profits from U.S. taxpayers via vaccine payments and so forth, which money is then used to fund governmental agencies responsible for regulating the pharmaceutical industry. Fauci, in his role as head of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, NIAID, no longer looks out for public health, but instead is in the business of pharmaceutical promotion. Just a few of the facts exposed in this book would be enough, but there are more than just a few. In 1984... When Fauci took over NIAID, 11.8% of Americans had a chronic disease. Now it's 54%. It was his job to research and discover why autism, allergies, many other diseases were increasing and eliminate the toxins causing it. Instead of acting as a true public health agency, he used it to develop and sell pharmaceutical products. He accomplished these things by creating a climate of fear in America and around the world that would make the world run to pharmaceuticals. These drugs were funded by U.S. taxpayers, and some of the profits were then funneled back to the agencies that were charged with regulating them. So much money changed hands that it corrupted everyone it touched, and the incentive to create more Unfounded fear increased accordingly. Originally, it was the AIDS epidemic, which was supposed to wipe out the human race. It was a disease which anyone other than IV drug users and male homosexuals had only an infinitesimally small risk of contracting, but it was used to create fear in the general population and thereby sell the drug cocktails created to fight it. Age was terrible, scary, but something more frightening was needed to induce the population of the world to rush to the coalition's only available preventive. A series of flus started to appear in the world, usually originating in China. Swine flu, bird flu, H1N1 flu, Zika virus all fell upon humanity until vaccines were widely available to supposedly stop these flus. Everyone had to get a flu shot, so people gradually became conditioned or used to the yearly vaccine routine. The anthrax attacks after 9-11 helped with the fear factor as well, since several prominent politicians supposedly received letters containing white powder presumed to be anthrax. 
Fear was ramped up in the population by leaps and bounds. Anthrax allowed Fauci to circumvent the treaty preventing research and development of bioweapons. That research was funded by the U.S. military as a joint our dual use material, dual use is research that could possibly be civilian, but the real purpose is military, thus the military funding of biowarfare agents. That is the program under which Fauci funded gain of function research at U.S. university labs and later in China, the CIA and the Pentagon through DARPA were all apparently working in tandem with Fauci to teach the Chinese how to weaponize bat virus. Dangerous pathogens were studied, made far more deadly to humans through all this research. Most people can see that this is all very sinister. This man is not someone who should be running U.S. public health, but it's even worse. According to Mr. Kennedy, his sordid past goes back to the AIDS crisis and his diabolical experiments on children, which killed at least 85 children, at least 85. The experiments were barbaric and illegal, but he did it anyway. He gained control of foster homes in seven states, then turned the pharmaceutical industry loose on these children. The children were powerless, no real representation, no guardian. They were tortured literally to death. Many of them did not even have HIV, but were simply human guinea pigs. Those children who refused the drugs or were non-compliant were taken to Columbia Hospital and had feeding tubes installed to administer the drugs. At least 85 died during the experiments. The atrocity wasn't enough for him, though, so he took the experiments to Africa, where he killed many pregnant mothers. This is all horrible, isn't it? Perhaps too horrible to be true. Perhaps it's not true. No, no, it's all true, and it's all documented in Mr. Kennedy's book, but if Dr. Fauci disputes any of the charges... Let him file a lawsuit against Mr. Kennedy and his publisher for defamation. I doubt that any such lawsuit will be forthcoming so the public has a chance, finally, to understand what all the fear, all the hype, all the destruction of the economies of the world is about. But first, they must read or at least be willing to listen. This is a planned and orchestrated use of pandemics to clamp down totalitarian control on the world's population. Throughout man's time on this earth, he's dreamed of being able to control the whole world. You know the names of those who have tried and failed, but the difference is now that for the first time it's possible. The involvement of the intelligence agencies such as CIA, even though it has nothing to do with health, is a giveaway. Quoting from the book, Quote, the intelligence agencies and health agencies have developed these extraordinary techniques for using fear to disable critical thinking. If you look at the whole rationale behind this pandemic, all of these rationales collapse. Why are we mandating vaccines that don't prevent transmission? What is the possible reason? That's just one of many absurdities of what we're doing today, but people who are submitted, subsumed in the orthodoxy which is the product of orchestrated fear, misinformation, and propaganda need to be woken up, end quote. Well, Mr. Kennedy, I had my own words to say that the woke and the unwoke, the liberal and the conservative, the Democrat and the Republican, all need to wake up and understand what is happening to them. It looks very bad for our future. If people continue to blindly obey and submit to totalitarian control, Quoting again now, I think this is historical jeopardy to humanity that we've never seen before. You know, the Black Plague, World War II, are arguably rivals for it, but I would argue that this is the worst thing that has ever happened to humanity because the essential ambition of the totalitarian state is to control, not just conduct, but not just conduct, but self-expression and thought and for the first time in history. Because of the technological revolution, the capacity for totalitarian forces to literally control every aspect of human expression, even human thought, is now unprecedented, end quote. Keeping all that in mind, the 80th anniversary of the start of World War II is an interesting coincidence. Those people fought to free the world from Nazi oppression, from Japanese imperial militarism, and the other forms of evil that seeks to enslave mankind. They sacrificed their lives for their country, certainly, but also for the chance to give the world the ability to shake off the yoke of totalitarianism. What have we done with that right? 
What have we done with their sacrifice? We should educate ourselves enough to at least be able to intelligently answer that question. The nations which were freed by victory in World War II are almost all sinking into totalitarianism. Based on fear of the pandemic that I just talked about, Australia is sending people to a literal camp behind wire against their will. Austria has locked down the entire population of unvaccinated people, won't even allow them out of their homes. Germany is perhaps the most restrictive country in Europe. We all know what's been happening here in the U.S. The U.S. response has been by way of unconstitutional mandates rather than by debate and vote of the people's representatives, the work that the Nazis, the Japanese, the Italians could not accomplish in four years of total war is being accomplished right now through the application of fear. There is, however, a little bit of good news about all this coming from the nation of India. Quoting from the complaint, quote, Petitioner has sought prosecution of AstraZeneca's Covishield manufacturer Bill Gates, his partner Adar Poonwala, and other government officials and leaders involved in the murder of a 23-year-old man who lost his life because of vaccination. The deceased took the COVID shield vaccine by believing in the false narrative that the vaccine is completely safe and also owing to the compliance requirements set by the railways that only double vaccinated people would be allowed to travel, end quote. So I suppose Mr. Gates should plan to stay away from India for a while because if convicted, The sentence is death. Now, one final quote from Mr. Kennedy's book. Quote, Today we have this situation where the U.S. military and the CIA are conspiring with the Chinese CDC and military scientists developing bioweapons together and conspiring to lie to the public. We have U.S. federal officials who are conspiring with Chinese military officials to hide the truth from the American public. End quote. Finally, folks, is this the worst thing that has ever happened to humanity? You, well, you can, you can decide that for yourselves, but for me, this entire program of fear stampeding us to destruction is run by a bunch of satanically inspired homicidal maniacs, and it is the spirit of Antichrist. At least that's the way I see it. Till next time, folks, this is Daryl Castle. Thanks for listening.